Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop and I'm back with another crowdfunding preview. Today we're looking at Lunar Rush from Dead Alive Games. And I have a few pretty big disclaimers for this one. The designer of this is a friend of mine that I've actually helped uh, with development of several of his games. He's also the brother of Will the Hungry Gamer, who's also a friend of mine. So with those pretty obvious potential biases in mind, I'm just going to do a playthrough for this one, showing off a solo against two AI. But I'm not going to do my normal uh, impressions at the end for this video. And this one can also be played 2v2 co-op. Uh, most of what you'll be seeing works the same way in co-op, except that the players can kind of share some stuff between each other. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month. You can also watch our separate streaming channel for even more content. Listen to our podcast with one to two episodes per week. Or join the conversation on our Discord. So the basic idea of Lunar Rush is players are competing to build the most successful base on the moon. They'll be bringing supplies and astronauts on ships to the moon and then bringing the things they make back from the moon to sell on Earth and earn victory points. The game also has a base management worker placement side of things where you actually run your moon base and try to make the materials you want to sell and build different modules to support your people. And it comes with a pretty simple automa to play against, uh, simple enough that I can run two of them at the same time without too much trouble. They'll basically be uh, tying up the shipping lanes and messing with the market as they sell their own goods, because as goods are sold in the market, their prices decrease. And with me playing against two AI, I'm going to have to beat both of them to actually win the game. We'll see how that goes. Well, let's jump right into the playthrough. I'll explain the details of each phase as we see them. So the first phase of each turn, and there are seven turns in total, is the Earth phase. In the final turns of the game, we'll close routes and limit our options, but uh, mainly here we're bidding for initiative order to see uh, whose ships will get to go on the lanes faster. And then we'll select our routes and get our moonbound ships ready. So each normal player has five identical cards, one through five. Playing a higher number than other players will make you go earlier in initiative, which means you'll get to pick your uh, routes going to and from the moon better. But also the value of your bid is subtracted straight from your victory point total. So you are uh, <laughs> losing points as you fight for a better place. For the first turn, I'm not uh, too worried. I'm okay if I get different options for my ship. So I'm just going to bid a two and save victory points. And in future turns, I'll get that previous card back, but only after I pick my new card. So I can't pick a two on turn two, but I could use a one, three, four, five, and then I'll get the two back. Now the red and yellow AI each pick a card as well. Red went with three and yellow also went with three. And in future turns, when there's a tie, the person who was further back in turn order the previous turn gets to go to the front. But if it happens on the very first round like this, you can either draw another card or if you have some dice here, I'll roll uh, the black die for red. And oh, that was not helpful at all. Uh, OK, there we go. Yellow wins out by one. So this turn is yellow, red, blue for initiative order. And we each start with 25 victory points. So they go down three and I go down two. Hey, I'm winning. Yay. And just a quick note for the AI, they are not going to shuffle their cards back in. They have two of every number and they'll just keep on going through their deck. But at the end of the game, they'll get bonus victory points for the cards that remain in their deck. So if they just by luck draw like all their lowest numbers, then uh, the game kind of rewards them for having bad order the rest of the game. All right, so now we all have to pick our routes. And just to show you for the moonbound routes going from Earth to the moon, uh, you have one fast, one medium, and one slow route. If you're playing with four players or doing the 2v2 co-op mode, you have a f uh, second fast route to choose. Fast routes only let you carry two items each time, but they arrive immediately, so you can use them this turn. And these are bringing like basically raw materials from Earth to build modules and stuff. Medium routes can carry five items, but it takes them two turns to arrive. And slow routes can carry nine items, but it takes them three turns to arrive. And you have pretty much the same thing for your earthbound routes at the end of the turn, which you can load up with goods to get victory points, basically make money. Fast routes can only carry one good, medium routes three, slow routes seven. But again, they take uh, longer numbers of turns to make it. So yellow is first, and you flip up an up and a down card for the AI. This is going to tell what their priority preference is for going up to the moon and coming back down to Earth. They'll take the first one that's available, and in turns one through four, they care more about what they're taking up because they want to block you from getting exactly what you want. But then in uh, turns five through seven, where the game has really focused 100% on getting as many goods sold as possible, uh, down will be their first option. So here for yellow, they're going to take the medium up to the moon route, which means now only slow or fast will be available to me. Meanwhile, red also wanted to take the medium first. His second preference is slow which means uh, I guess I'm going to be taking the fast route. And I should have said each player is placing two ships total, but you each place one at a time in initiative order. 
which means after I place my ship, uh, red and yellow are going to place again. And they continue to prefer moonbound routes in turns one through four and earthbound routes in turns five through seven. So if I decided, well, you know, I'm going to place uh, my route going back to earth first, then they would actually uh, slide in and take this fast route too. And I couldn't bring anything from the earth to moon. So I'll go ahead and take this before I miss the chance. Okay, and then yellow coming down from earth is going to take the slow route and red's going to take the medium route. So I guess I'm going to have the fast route for both. So there we go. So now before we finish up the Earth phase, I have to actually pick what I'm bringing with me to the moon. Uh, we can immediately remove the Otoma ships because they don't matter for, they don't actually like bring anything <laughs> to the moon. Whereas we do have to pay attention to their ships over here. They'll actually bring goods back down to Earth and sell them to mess with the market. So what are my options for bringing things? So I can bring two items. And uh, first of all, I can bring up to two astronauts. That's this little symbol here on any ship going to the moon. These are more workers for me, and it seems like you always want more workers, but you also have to have room for them in your habitation modules, and they're also going to require life support to survive. Uh, so I might want to bring two astronauts right away. I have room for five at the moment, and I only have three, so I could fit them immediately. But some other things I might want to bring, these big cubes take up two spaces, so they would use up all of my space, but you need at least one of those to build basically every module in the game, so they're pretty important. And then these blue and red cubes, they only take up one space each. Those are parts to, again, build modules and also uh, sometimes make uh, goods on the moon. Now, all three of those goods I can create on the moon myself in my R&D lab, but it does use up my precious workers. And especially to get uh, these ones is super expensive. Unless you uh, upgrade your R&D lab a few times and then it becomes <laughs> way easier to do because, yeah, you get to uh, upgrade these buildings if you have the resources to pay for them to kind of level up your base. You know what, what the hey, let's uh, go a heavy early worker route and uh, get two more workers to my habitation module. So that's now full. You can build a second hab module to be able to get 10 workers uh, or up to 10 workers on the moon eventually. But now at the end of every turn, I'm going to have to pay life support equal to my number of workers. I start with six, but I always have to use this uh, life support module to get more. And if I ever can't fit workers in a habitation module or if I can't keep them alive with life support, they die and I get minus 25 victory points for each one. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't let your astronauts die. But that's it for my ship. It was fast. It made it to the moon right away, brought these astronauts right away, and it's back to my supplies. Don't have to worry about it anymore. Now, one more thing. I think the, uh, the phase this happens in might change in the final game. They're still playing around, and I think I actually have some older cards for a few of these. But uh, we're going to load up what these ships are bringing to Earth and kind of know how they're going to mess with the markets. So yellow, since it's on a slow route, will be bringing one Lunathist gem. Those are worth a ton of victory points. And red, since it's on a medium route, will be bringing some ore and shards. To show you, these bottom two ore and shards are like the components to build these top two, Lunarium Metal and Lunathist Gems. The, uh, the more complex goods are worth way more money, at least until you start selling them and their price starts going down. Whereas these ones are not worth nearly as much, but they're a lot easier to get. And sometimes these cards will have uh, instructions at the bottom to get rid of gold cards. This is one of the nice uh, varied elements in the game. In each game, you'll use eight out of a ton of these gold modules. They are more expensive to use. And I should walk you through how modules work. Uh, so the cost to build them is down here. It doesn't take any workers to build them, just a lot of resources. The number of victory points you get at the end of the game for building them is here. And then uh, if you place the indicated number of workers here, you get what's on the right. So here, one worker would get me six ore, whereas with my basic ore mine, uh, one worker gets me a single ore. So huge <laughs> bonus there. But the AI didn't get rid of any of them, and I certainly don't have the resources to build one yet, so we're not going to worry about those. But after we potentially buy gold modules, and by the way, that happens in reverse initiative order when you're playing competitive. Again, uh, here the AI just steals them, but <laughs> otherwise uh, the last player gets first crack at those. If you're playing with wonders, which we're not, you can draft those. But uh, the big thing for the moon phase is we're going to actually like use our buildings, build new buildings. And then at the end of the phase, we'll load stuff on our earthbound ship to send back down to Earth. So in terms of building, first, you've got a lot of intermediate modules. They have kind of a blue background and then the advanced ones have a purple background. The intermediate ones are either going to go on top of one of your existing buildings to make it more efficient or go to the right or left here to open up new options. And then once you have an intermediate module, you can build even again on top of that one of the advanced modules that is even way better. Now, in this case, I really think I need a life support module because um, only getting even with two workers for life support a turn is not going to uh, sustain my five workers. So to build this better life support module, I need uh, one white cube. I've got that one power and one life support. But I currently have zero power. So let's put my first worker on my basic solar array. That's going to get me two power freeze action. And then we'll go ahead and pay for this. That's one life support, one power, and unfortunately, my only cube for building modules. 
But there we go. We have gotten three victory points, and now we can much more easily uh, keep pace with our life support needs. Now, I still have uh, four workers left. I could start stockpiling life support for later, even though I have enough to survive this turn. I could also build some ore or some shards to send down on my ship. My ship is fast this turn, which means I can only hold one thing, so I'd like to have one. And if possible, I'd like to mess up the AI, so I see that they're shipping down more ore than shards. So I don't know if one ore is really going to uh, change the price in the markets too much, but sure, let's go ahead and build a single ore. And then I think I might build up some building resources to get better modules. So I'll get two of the blue and one of the red. Oh, there are the names. <laughs> tech and machinery. Okay, so the red cubes are machinery. Blue is tech. And you'll see blue is easier to get than red. I got two for a single worker and only one red. For my last action, I could trade in all of that for one of the white cubes, but we'll hold off on that. And yeah, I think I'll go ahead and build up some life support. So I don't have to do as much in future turns. All right, and uh, that will cover that. So we bring all these guys back. We have five people. They can all fit. We are losing five life support to down to three left. But nobody died. Hooray. Now we're going to load our Earthbound ships. And again, in the final version of the game with the correct cards, I think that uh, the AI will load their ships after we load ours. We don't like, know what they're going to load and don't know how it's going to affect the markets. But I needed to do it now to see if they uh, got rid of the gold cards. I'm just kind of <laughs> adapting a bit to the, uh, the older cards that I'm playing with. Now we go to the market phase. Uh, we move all Earthbound ships. We sell items that reach Earth. And then they advance the turn marker and we're ready for the next turn. So my ship gets there immediately. And it goes right over here to the Earth spacecraft where it's going to unload. The AI ships bring their stuff, but they have not made it yet. So I'm now going to sell my goods for victory points. Each ship sells in turn. And you get the number of victory points to the space on the right where the token is, and then it moves one to the right. Hey, everybody, this is Mike from the future with a quick note. I made a pretty big rules error here uh, for the entire game. When I was lowering the market value of goods after they were brought to the Earth, I was supposed to lower it by one for each good sold, not just one for each sale overall which would have made uh, the market values much more dynamic, which would have punished me severely for waiting to so late in the game to make all my sales. Uh, the Automa probably would have beaten me. So yeah, a big thing there. I still think the rest of the gameplay stands up the way it's supposed to. Uh, so I didn't want to just redo the entire video, but that is uh, very important. I wanted you to be aware ahead of watching the rest. In later turns, turn three and on for these ones, turn five and on for these, depending on how many things get sold in that turn, they might actually refresh some value. But for now, I've just ticked it down a little bit. Now, it's still worth nine for the next one. So unless I somehow oversell them again, the AI is still going to get nine victory points for their sale. But it is fun to mess with other players or the AI and sort of undercut them when you can. So I go from 23 to 32 dominating. And we're into turn two of seven. A major change in the last three turns is that you pay more victory points for your bids because it matters so much more like getting the exact things you want. And also important is that all ships will get down to earth and you will get to sell your stuff at the end of the game. So like even if you go on the slow route to turn seven, that would normally take three turns to get to earth. You still get to make your sale. So often that's like a key thing, trying to have a really high number in that final turn and sell a ton of stuff right at the end. Because otherwise you get a generally much lower value for your goods if they're still on the moon. All right, so now we bid on turn order. I'm actually a little bit torn. I sort of want to be the fast route coming uh, up to the moon again so that I can like get one of those uh, building pods right away. So I might, I don't know, let's go for a four this time, see how that treats me. And then my two will come back, although uh, since the relative order determines who wins ties, like if one of them got a four right now, I would go ahead of them since I was further back in the previous turn. I'm going to leave my old card there. All right, then yellow also gets a four, red gets a one. Okay, so red's clearly in the back, and then yellow tied with me will be second, and I'll be first. And I lose four victory points. Yellow does as well. Red uses only one. Now, I don't get to see what their up-down preferences are until it's actually their turn to choose a route. So uh, I just have to go. And yeah, even though it's less efficient, um, I think maybe I'll do a fast route. Well, maybe I'll do a medium route and give me a little bit more flexibility with what I bring. Yeah, let's try that. I mean, I can wait one turn, just kind of build stuff. So I can uh, fit five items there, but let's see what the AI does first. All right, so then yellow and red, they both threw the same one again. Uh, they both want medium first and then fast, then slow. So that means yellow will be fast, right? Because I took medium and red will be slow. I mean, while just looking, uh, they're both going to prefer to be on the slow route. And then, oh, and then medium and then fast, same preferences. And yeah, honestly, I'd rather be slow as well because I'm not really in a hurry to mess with the market. They aren't going to really go down that much anyway. So then yellow will take the medium, red will take the fast. And again, we'll go and load them up. Now yellow's bringing us some more ore and shards. 
And reds just, uh, oh man, immediately bring in a gem. That was nice for a fast draw. And once again, we can remove their ships, but what do I want to bring? Let's see, to build another habitation module is only a single cube, so that's pretty inexpensive. And I've definitely got uh, enough life support to at least support one extra guy. So I think I'll go ahead and bring two more astronauts, uh, definitely a cube. Then I can fit one more thing. Let's bring a red since those are a little bit slower to manufacture. But I'm not going to get those this turn. They move to the second spot, and uh, next turn I'll get to use them. All right, and once again, the AI didn't take any gold stuff, and I can't build any. Although maybe I should look if I'll be able to next time. I would need to get to a second cube. And then, yeah, I haven't really decided what uh, strategy I want to go for. It's often good in some ways to focus on like ore or shards and like really get a ton of the more advanced ones being made. But yeah, that's kind of out of my reach at the moment. So let's just see how things go. So back over to my base. I don't need to build the habitation module yet. I can use the cube that's coming to build it next turn. But I'm kind of liking the idea of building an R&D lab and getting all of these uh, basic resources a little bit easier. It didn't cost me any of the white cubes, just two blue in a row, which I already have, and two power. So I mean, I'm almost there. Let's, I can just go to the basic solar array, get two more power. And yeah, I'm ready to build this immediately. Uses up all of those and two of my energy. Maybe I can try to set myself up for getting a gold module next turn. Two guys will get me one of the building cubes. Uh, maybe get three blue since I have a red coming. But then I do need more life support. Let's not forget that. One, two, three. They'll get me to six, which means, uh, yeah, I'm going to be running out soon, aren't I? Whew. Oh, wait, but I just realized if I do all this, I have nothing to ship on my ship this turn. Now, that's not the end of the world. For each space that you don't have anything when your ship lands on Earth, you just get one victory point. So uh, since my slow one could hold seven things, I'll just get seven victory points in a few turns for nothing. It's not much, but it's not uh, zero. Yeah, I don't know. This might be a terrible idea, but <laughs> we'll try it out. I'm down to one life support. Oof, so when those two astronauts uh, get up to the ship next time, all this might be a terrible, terrible plan. We'll see how things go. Let's see. Maybe I can build an advanced life support module next turn. <laughs> that might not be a bad idea. All right, so yeah, as I said, I uh, have nothing <laughs> to place in my ship, but the AI does land first with this fast one that's red, and then, oh, also red's medium. They're having a good turn. Uh, yellow's medium will be there. Yellow's slow. It's almost arriving, and then my empty slow will be getting there later. All right, so red uh, on fast, he sold one gem for 42 victory points. <laughs> that was good for them. And then red on medium is selling two ore. Uh, at 9, so that's 18, and 42, that's 60, and one shard at 8, so 68, and then both of these tumble down one. Yeah, that catapults them to 89 victory points. They're certainly ahead. And that's it for turn two. Things move pretty quickly. Let's go to our uh, bidding again. With me being in the front, I'll probably lose any tiebreakers. So I'm thinking, like, maybe I'll just do a one or a two. Yeah, you know what? I'll just do a one and kind of plan to lose this turn. Yellow also did a one. Well, that didn't work out the way I wanted Red did it too. Really? <laughs> so a three could have put me in first place? Oh, well. So uh, it'll be red, yellow, blue, since uh, I lose the tiebreaker with them behind me. And we each pay our victory points. So red picks their roots first. Let's see. Their preference is medium and then slow for both. So we're going to take the medium to the moon route. And then yellow in second place also wanted medium. So they're going to take the slow. The fast will be left to me. I can work with that. So there we go for that. And then yellow preferred medium. Red actually preferred fast, so I'll get the slow one again. Okay. Hopefully I'll be able to put something on it this time. All right, so what do I want to bring to the moon? <laughs> uh, this is probably a terrible strategy. I really should be, like, making things, but maybe I'll just get every astronaut and barely be able to feed them and never win. Well, we'll see how things go. All right, and then red and yellow. Oops, and they're both taking away a gold card. So we randomly lose uh, two... Yeah, I don't know which of these I'm going for. I still... <laughs> Filming makes it hard to think of a strategy as much as I might do otherwise. But hey, at least I know I need another space for people. All right, so <laughs> we could have built this last turn. I'm actually not 100% sure if I need to like have it ready for them when they arrive. I don't think so. I don't think it's checked until the end of the turn. Uh, but there we go. And then I very much need more than life itself, an advanced life support module. Um, so I have a cube. I have a blue. I have power. Okay, I have everything. So there we go. That brings... All this stuff down to zero. Now let's see, with nine people, I've got one life support, so I guess at a bare minimum I need to do that. And then I'm technically surviving this round. And I should probably finally look at what I want to be making this game. Okay, so to make like an ore mine to get more Lunarium ore, and then a refinery to make the Lunarium like bars, um, that would be pretty easy to get this turn. 
But then I also need power, so I probably want to upgrade my power generation to the solar array. If I instead was looking for shards and then lunathist, need a ton of blue production, ton of power production, ton of uh, shard production. So maybe I'll go for the gold bars. And yeah, I mean, there are two gold modules which might be helpful there if I ever have the materials to build them. But for now, I'm looking at getting some of these. Maybe if I can get the ore mine going, I can actually uh, send some stuff on my ship this turn. That'd be good. So that needs another white. All right, so let's send two people here to get the big cube and then spend my one red. That upgrades my ore mine. There we go. Then yeah, I think I'll do four ore. I wish I could do more because I have a, a slow ship this time, which could hold up to seven, but so it goes. I got three people left. Definitely need some reds to build more buildings and blues, I guess. There we go. So that fills me up pretty good for uh, building materials. And then I could get a shard to uh, send home as well. But no, I think I'll get some power to uh, get ready. <laughs> oh, wait, I was on zero. I do need one more uh, life support. I should have gone to eight. So now I'm at 12. There we go. So I got to spend nine. Bring me down to three. And I might as well get the last person next time I send a ship up, right? I mean, <laughs> I certainly have the uh, infrastructure to help them now. And yeah, there are definitely no other buildings I could build right now. So we're good. We're going to ship all of this stuff. So once again, we're leaving a lot uh, out on the table here. We could have fit three more things. And who's coming in first? Reds fast. Man, reds doing well for themselves. Uh, yellows medium. Oh, and also yellows slow. Wow. Watch Mike lose a game. All right, so Red brought in the first one of these. They're going to get 22. And that's it for Red. So let's go ahead and put theirs. Get some all the way past 100. They're at 109. Nice job, Red. Right, and then Yellow, Medium. They're doing two shipments of one ore and two shards. And those are resolved separately. So let's see. That's three times eight. Then they both move. Oh, and then it's three times eight again. So that's, uh, what, 48? But now they're both worth seven. But now this is turn three. So turn three on, we're going to check these for refreshing. So they sold two ore. So actually the price refreshes twice. And they sold four shards. The price refreshes once. That's good for me since I have some ore uh, coming in a few turns. Although these ones won't be checked for refreshment until turn five. All right, we have only four turns left. <laughs> Come on, Mike, get something going. All right, so this turn, let's go for a four again. I want to maybe go before them a little bit. All right, red is, ooh, doing a five, yellow, what, also a five? Oh, man, well, I don't mind them spending a lot of their victory points, but I don't love that uh, they're both going to four when I'm spending a bunch. All right, so yellow will be first and red will be second. And this is the last turn where they prefer to uh, get their flight to the moon figured out first. So yellow's going to take the fast flight up to the moon and uh, red's going to take the slow flight. I guess I get medium. Well, you know, interestingly enough, hmm, I could just say, forget you to this and place my first ship over here. Then uh, the first AI, I guess yellow, would take the medium route. That would be their preference, getting them nothing. And I would get double down for myself and lock yellow out. Although red will be still pulling ahead, and I don't have nearly enough stuff to fill up two routes. So I guess it's okay. And hey, this will let me get my last astronaut. That's fun. And then yellow wants, okay, the fast drop off, and uh, red wants the slow. So I get the medium there. Let's see. Red is taking away another gold card. Oh, so is yellow. Kind of feel like I'm maybe not going to get one of these. Although oh, the two that I actually want are still around. Maybe I can try to set myself up for them with uh, this new ship coming in. Yeah, it might be possible. Speaking of, let's get my last astronaut. Let's definitely get a building cube. And I think two reds because it's still a little bit slow for me to actually get those. But I don't get it this turn. The slides on up. All right, and let's do some building. Definitely going to get a white cube over here. And let's see, should I try to make the Lunarium refinery this turn? And have the white cube. Although, wait, if I do that, I can't. Get the thing I was just talking about. Well, maybe I won't worry about uh, gold cards. <laughs> maybe I'll just uh, focus on probably losing the game by building stuff now. All right, so yeah, I need more power. Wait, can I build a better power thing? I would need another white cube, of course. Darn it. All right, so sure. For now, I'll just uh, focus on getting this. So I'll get uh, power there. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I don't need power to build it. I do need two of the ore. So we'll get that. That covers the ore. That's the one red, one blue cube. So we've built it. Oh, and then we can't forget how much life support do we need this turn. That would get me eight. That's more than enough. I'm at 11 total and I need uh, nine. All right, so I need more of the ore. That gets me two ore. And then I've already got two power. So boom, I got my first bar. It looks like that'll be the only thing I'm actually sending to Earth this turn. Darn it. Wait, did I remember to lower my energy? I don't think I did. Hopefully I didn't just rob myself. I guess I'll start setting up or I could. Yeah, let's go ahead and get a shard. I want to send at least a bit more back. Medium roots have three spaces. So I'm only wasting one. That's not the worst thing. All right, I do need nine life support, so I'm down to two. 
And I'll load what I've got. All right, so what's the AI I got coming in? First on fast, uh, it's like another ore. That's not bad. And then medium ship. And then my empty loser slow ship comes in. But I got two ships coming in next time. Oh, yeah. Let's see, that was yellow selling a single ore for eight. They're at a 68. You can't see the rest. And then also yellow selling a single crystal again for 40. Oh my gosh. That gets them into the 100 club as well with red. Where's Mike? About to get lapped in Sadnessville. Although, hey, my empty slow ship gets me seven victory points. Woo! And then in terms of sales, we're still not refreshing these. But there was only one ore sold, so it's almost back to full price. And there was zero of these sold. So I don't know if it goes. I think it maybe goes all the way back to the left. I mean, next turn will get me a bunch of points. I won't catch up to them, but hopefully my ramp is ramping the way it should. And now that we're in turn five, the AI will prioritize uh, going down instead of up, which means even if I go first, I can't like lock them out. I missed my only chance to do that last turn. We're all going to get a ship going down, generally speaking. But I want at least a medium. Now, I don't really care if I get better than that. So probably I think, well, let's even go down to a two, maybe. We'll see how it goes. Because even if they go before me, they might not pick what I want. And then red, darn it. Okay, good. So I'm going to go before one of them. That's probably going to be enough. So that means red's paying six victory points. I'm paying four. Yellow's only paying two. There we go. Our initiative for the third to last turn. And red is first. And they're going to, again, prioritize down first. They're going to take the fast route. I think I'm cool with that. And then do I want to take the slow route? I mean, the only negative is that I'm not selling stuff as early, but it seems like the refresh is taking care of that pretty well. So sure, I'll go slow. And yellow will take what they can get, which is medium. And then red also wanted fast here. Now, this is the last turn that slows even open because uh, it wouldn't have time to reach us in turn six or seven. So if I put it here, I would just get whatever they're giving me in the final turn, which to me sounds mess. So we'll go there. Yellow just takes the other one. Doesn't matter. What am I going to load? Uh, I don't have any astronauts left, so I guess let's do like two of those and a red. Maybe I can get a uh, <laughs> finally get a gold for at least some extra victory points at the end with that. And red and yellow load up. No gold cards gone this turn. And I do have, uh, I don't have enough to buy a gold card. I only have one cube, but I can certainly spend this stuff. And I got my last astronaut. So let's remember that I need uh, 10 life support from now on. But I had two last turns. So here, we'll just uh, go ahead and get that set right off the bat. And then I guess one, two, three, four, five, six of my uh, eight remaining would get me two bars. I could go like seven, eight and get two shards. But I also have some stuff to build with. Let's see. Yo, I could upgrade my shard mine to get double capacity. That seems pretty good, actually. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Because I have a slow ship this turn. I can fit most of that. And yeah, I think the rest kind of does itself. Two, four power for the uh, two, four I need there. Two, four, or two, boom. Okay, we got two of the bars and four shards. That's six. We can almost fill our slow ship. That's going to make us some money. Mike's slow out of the gate. Maybe too slow to actually win, but at least I'm doing something. And yeah, I zeroed out my uh, life support, but that's okay. And yeah, next turn with those uh, two cubes coming in, if this doesn't get taken by the AI, I should be able to get this. It's six more victory points and going to get me some more stuff to ship. I'm happy with all of that. All right, so ships coming in, first reds or then my ships, one, two. And we got some of theirs coming in for previous turns and my big one there. Ah, darn. <laughs> uh, Red's going to mess me up a bit. He only gets uh, nine for his one or, but... It's just enough to mess up my sale here. So I only get eight for each. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and do those. That gets me uh, four times eight, 32. And then it's going to go back up a single one because he sold five total this turn. And then shards, I get the full price, eight. And gold bars, I get 22. That's another 30. Nice, I'm actually in spitting distance of them. And now it is turn five. So zero crystals or gems were sold. So that goes all the way up. Uh, one to four bars was sold. So that goes up one. Only one of these was sold, so that goes all the way up, and I already did that one, so there we go. All right, this time we are paying triple our bid, and there is no more slow up, so we might not get to get anything up if I don't uh, go fast enough. They played pretty low cards. Uh, I just want to be at least second, so let's play a four. I can't, I mean, I hope they don't play double fives again. They did that once already, so they shouldn't have too many fives left in their deck. In fact, yeah, I guess I can check. Uh, red... Mm, sell his fours and fives and okay but he's ahead of me so he would lose the tiebreaker so he'd have to get his one five to beat me and yellow also has one five left yeah i feel pretty confident here now of course i do hope they played the highest darn card they can so they can lose triple digits on it all right so yellow gets a two and red a four. Ooh, that's awesome so i am first but he's still spending the max possible thank you sir you go boop 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 that worked out well all right, see, so yeah, no question before I even see what they're going to do, I'm going to take the slow one. 
And then red prefers medium. We don't have to really see what yellow wants. They're getting fast. And then I could do a medium. Oh, yeah, sorry, that's closed. So you can still pick that as one of your options, but instead you get an immediate bonus. So this one says, if selected, immediately gain one, a hab, that's one of these, and two life support instead of placing a ship. That's kind of cool. In fact, wait a second. I was going to get a single uh, hab here anyway. So yeah, I will definitely pick that and get one of those and two life support. Then red prefers fast, yellow prefers medium. We don't care. So I'm not actually uh, putting a ship down. I'm just getting some free stuff. Love it. Plus these, plus a red. Definitely going to get a gold unless they steal the one I want. And yeah, let's see red. Oh, minus one gold card. And if they had been first, they would have stolen another gold card. So just one going away. Yellow didn't take anything, though. Okay, I have one in four chance of them taking the one I wanted. Uh, that was another one I wouldn't have minded, but I don't think that's what I was going for. Um, yeah, there we go. That's the one that I wanted. Let's go ahead and build an efficient ore mine uh, right now. So that'll take two of our habs and two red. Got more than enough of that to go around. In fact, I can still build something else. Yeah, that's uh, three ore and three power all at once. That's great. And because of that free uh, life support I got from the up route I chose, two guys will make me survive. Let's uh, certainly send somebody here. Let's see, can I get a better Lunarium refinery? So it's just more efficient in terms of people, but I certainly am not missing people. What do I need to build one of these dumb things? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that seems like way too much. Oh, and I would have to have two gems already. No, we're not going to do that. Yes, maybe we hang on to this hab, try to get one more, and then build a final gold card in the last turn. That seems like it's probably worth more. All right, so what else can we do? Uh, two of those, right? Or four, I mean. I'm not going to have room to ship all this stuff, but I'll do what I can. Uh, that'll get me two more ore. Now let's get two more power. And then I can spend four of the five ore and four power to get two of these bars. One guy left. What are you going to do, guy? Oh, I only went. There we go. We'll get two more ore. Boom! All my uh, building up pays off. So all I can ship right now is what? Seven things, seven things. So I guess those. And then the crystals seem to be worth more at the moment. I guess we'll do like one ore and four crystals. There we go. Ooh, but actually looking at either of the buildings I can build next time, I would need two reds. That being the case, let's actually not build these two ore and let's have this guy get a second red as well. Although, I mean, two ore by itself, well, if we never ship it, it's only worth four victory points. And that building's worth uh, six and get us more ore anyway. Yeah, it's fine. Although I'm also forgetting that uh, leftover building materials are each worth one victory point at the end of the game. So this might be kind of like a zero sum. Whatever. Down to zero life support. We got our ships loaded for bear. Uh, yellow's in first. Oh, yellow again. Sorry, red. Oh, there's red and slow. Oh, I didn't ship anything this turn. <laughs> That's the, uh, the penalty for slow. But don't forget, all of my ships will ship at the end of the game regardless so the fact that like this one is kind of not going to have a chance to get in in turn seven he'll just get in afterwards now i will get like the worst market prices but i can deal with that all right so uh yellow's doing a gold bar i don't love that and two ore and a uh what's my call it a shard oh and then red's also doing a gold bar all right so yellow gets 22 for that and then red gets 20 and then it's going to go one back up and then yellow's selling two of these for 16 and one of these for eight, so that's 24. And then it goes up, and that goes up. So yellow and red way ahead of me again. I still haven't passed 100, but soon, right? Very soon. Soon, all my pigs will come to roost. And so final turn, we are paying five times our bid this time. And the medium route is closed. This one, ooh, you get three shards instead of placing a ship. But the problem is, I really want to get the slow route, right? I mean, that is going to be four more good shipped. So even if I like use my five and pay five times my bid, oof, that'd be 25 money. But to ship four more goods, I think that'll make up the difference. So I'm just going to hope that neither of them gets their five that is left in their deck. See what happens. Oh, <laughs> red spent the least possible and yellow preempted me. Ah, that was, well, you know what? But yellow might not want slow. Yellow might not want the slow route. So that's okay. All right, boom, boom, and boom. Although, actually, you know what? The AI runs out of up-down cards in the final turn. I kind of... I'd have to check the rules again, but I want to do it while I'm recording. I think they just automatically take the best one, right? Because there would literally be... Um, well, I guess there's a reason if they wanted to go faster. No, I'm just going to be hard on myself and save it. Yellow automatically chooses uh, slow. Could be totally wrong. I'll take medium. And then, of course, red will take that. And then I did draw a card for the up. Again, I'm not quite sure about the rules here, but yellow goes for fast. Oh, and three shards or a hab. With the hab, I can build that location. So yeah, I think I'll do that one. And uh, oh, that's red, <laughs> but I will do it. And it doesn't matter anyway. 
So I'm getting one of these, and again, two life support, which gives me exactly enough to uh, save a worker. Although life support and energy, I think you also get one victory point for each leftover. So getting four victory points for getting an extra life support might be the best moneymaker I can do. And hey, red and yellow didn't steal a gold, so I can get the one I wanted, which is this bad boy here. It's going to take two habs, two reds, and an energy. Yeah, so I just lost five victory points to get a six victory point building. But with a single worker, I can get 12 more victory points even if I never ship these. So that's still pretty good. All right, so maximizing victory points. Definitely doing that and that. So that's three power and nine ore. Definitely no way I'm going to ship all of that. I um, need at least two people on there. We'll see if uh, four victory points is better than other options. Um, need one power. And then going to go ahead and get two of those. I'm going to power down by four and four of these are gone. But I get some bars. And I guess four shards and two of these. Yeah, it's all kind of the same value. All right, so we'll go for it. And I can only ship uh, three things. Looking at the leftover value, I'm losing about half value regardless, but there's a bigger impact. So I got to make sure I ship both of those. And then I feel like my shard will have a slightly better chance. So I'm going to leave all that stuff there and just ship these. All right, so all that's left is uh, shipping some stuff and counting. So red will get in there first to mess up all our prices. Then red again, and then it'll be my medium, my middle slow, and then yellow slow to finish up the game. All right, so we don't care about refreshing, we just care about value here. So red sells a bar, darn you, gets 20. Oh, you know, I just remembered, by the way, uh, I need to pay. So I pay 25, yellow pays 25, red pays 5. That's really good for them. All right, back to selling. Red's final sale is 3 or that'll get him 27. So we ended at 169, so he has uh, lapped me for the moment. And I might as well just move all the stuff on. So it's that, then that then this, then yellow gets their bit. All right, I'm really going to run down the value of uh, gold here, aren't I? So that'll be 18 each. That's also 18 each. This is 16 each. Oh, God, this is hard math. Uh, 36, 72, uh, 104, I think. Well, that's certainly nice. One, two, three, four, plus 100. So now I'm suddenly right behind red. I get all these two. All right, so that's eight for the first set. Eight for this. Okay, so they're all going to be eight. That makes it nice and easy. And I got nine times eight, 72. Wow. I feel like maybe I cheated here or something. I don't know. So uh, take me around to 241. <laughs> and uh, that's worth just eight. All right, and then yellow's final sale. They're getting one ore and five shards. Glad I lowered the price a little bit. So that's 35 and 843. Oh, wait, crud. Ah, who did I just move? <laughs> Well, I definitely messed up the uh, scoring there because I certainly moved red instead of me. I think I would have won anyway. I mean, let's see. I was like, what, like 50 ahead of them or something? But now they get five times their leftover cards. So red had five, seven, 11 times 50, 55. Crud, I don't know if I would have won. Yellow had five, nine, 45. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> maybe I can do the math uh, in the edit so you'll see what the actual thing is. Although, hold on. I think I would still win. I don't have any life support left, but I get one point from that. Uh, and then uh, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 15, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22. Oh, and then victory points uh, for buildings I built. 27, 35, 38, 42, 45, 50. Uh, gosh, and then 12 for those, 62 more. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure I won. <laughs> I'm not sure by how much, but I think I got him with that. So there you go. That was a little taste of Lunar Rush. You can play a solo with just one Automa, and maybe they'll have a capability of playing with three in the final game. I'm not sure yet. And it's still very much a prototype. Like I said, I was playing with some uh, cards that are already behind the development. <laughs> but uh, hopefully this was still helpful for you to see the game in action. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.